All right, let's hop into it. Another series on another day. What an all. Welcome back to the channel. It's midweek mustard time. Puppy Paw on the Francais going up against Vua Ao Lang. Mio Micah, the highest ranking player of Vietnam, playing as Jun Dark. Map is going to be Scarguard. Expect a lot of pro scout shenanigans. It's funny, we just had Chinese versus Yu Ji, and I think this matchup can have a, a similar approach. Double pro scout seems very feasible here. However, maybe not when Puppy Paw does this. He was trying to shove the deer in, it got lamed, and now he's moved his villagers out. That's really crafty. So while you can go pro scouts, guys, one cool thing with the French is they spend so little to build mills that you can also just ripple out onto the map. So not the worst of ideas here. On the other side, of course, Joan won't be able to do the same. Joan is more likely to go pro scouts in this matchup than go for the pocket mills because the difference here is you don't get that discount. That was one of the differences between the variant sieve and the original is that you still have to pay full price. The other most notable difference would be your TCs do not produce quicker as shown, and also finally, you do not get the melee tech in Blacksmiths for free. So add those details together, and what you have is a scaling point for French. The longer the game goes on a stalemate, the better it gets for them. So the pressure really is on the Jeune player to try and make things happen. Yeah, historically, though, I think this matchup's really good for French. To me, when I look at this matchup, Joan has to outplay in the first two fights, or you're just behind. Really, really far behind. It's that brutal. Because we talked about the creeping eco. The other issue is Joan becomes more of a liability the longer it goes on. And what I mean by that is, you know, the longer the game goes on, the more knights there are, the more opportunity that Joan just immediately gets wiped by heavy calf. Well, looks like we have got range shown. Great choice made by me and my cup. I've seen a few games where people go melee. That only makes sense if you force your opponent into spears. And a French player should never really be going spears first, as they should always have advantage. The reason why you go range zone is when your opponent tries to run away, you can just reach in and snipe a unit here or there, right? That's the value. What oh, ideal coming out here. Puppy Paul needs to be a little bit careful. We'll move away just before the Divine Arrow can be used. But yeah, getting two to one there. The pressure really is on the gold. I, I actually think Puppy Paul's already gotten by the long curlies here. Oh, nicely paid as well. Both knights really low, so he loses the scout, but gets it in exchange for the knight. On the other side, dude, Puppy Paul is out playing. Divine Arrow is at least going to even up a bit. But what you're seeing here is the exact surge point issue, right? The, the skill element I'd said about this matchup. The first two or three exchanges define the outcome of this matchup about 90% of the time. And right now, it is looking very clearly defined in favor of the reigning champion of the midweek muster. Remember, it was actually Puppy Paw that took it in the end for week number two over his brother. With a very memorable opening game in particular. Twinara is going to be there. Much better. That's a recovery arc. And a much needed one at that. Joan, that's actually kind of cool. She can frontline for a little bit. It's only two nights. That was sick, though, man. That, that looked ugly. Really ugly. Although, now it is going to get ugly in a different way. I don't like the Miyamika. He just took a really good exchange there, and now he's going Spears. I think after that type of fight, you just continue night production. I think what's worrying him here is because we're seven minutes in, he knows that French should have more eco, right? Like, it's actually even more condemning for Joan because you sacrifice a villager to get Joan in warrior form. That means your opponent can have more villies. Now, we have had three worker kills so far, which has kept Poppy Poor in check. But it still puts him in a position where he should be ahead. And I think that maybe made Mio Micah worry a bit too much. If he didn't get those three worker kills, the spearman choice would be warranted. But now, looking at it, it just feels weird. And where did he hit those villagers? Was it on the backside? Yeah, I think it was back here. Either that on the front. Puppy Paw. I mean, this is kind of the obnoxious thing I think about French in this matchup is that you can kind of afford to lose a few villagers. <laughs> Obviously not ideal, but it doesn't necessarily put you in a losing state in what feels like a mirror, but secretly isn't. Upsides, Purple did get a few night kills that will accelerate the time to level three. Hmm. 
Up four. Looks like he's going to have to pull back to defend here. There might be hope for me and Micah. Charge comes in. No reaction. Puppy ball. What? Oh my god. He had no vision there. He never rebuilt the scout. Huge swing here. Me and Micah now ahead. And he's going to start to farm this up. Knights and spears in the mix. Puppy Paw. You notice he's just targeting down all the injured ones with the smites. Divine arrows have ran out though. Me and Micah. Did he overextend? That's the big question because he was so focused on the fight. He wasn't reproducing. Down to just two knights. Meanwhile, Puppy Paw somehow still with seven. <laughs> Incredible swing here. That was crazy. Me and Micah are ahead now by four, but he needs a little bit of time to realize it. Zhone is going to be chased down and killed off. He's also now playing out onto pocket economies, which is something Puppy Paw can exploit. Oh my god. Spears trickling out. I mean, you know, yeah, the counter to Knights, but not when you have small quantity. Needs to be a little bit careful here. Notice that Puppy Paw, as soon as the Knight gets down to half HP, you have to move away. Otherwise, it's 24 XP for Zhone. I believe. Is that the boar? Okay, so Puppy Paw, yeah, he's behind by five, but he is surging his eco and forcing Idol on the other side. I guess the nice thing about having so many deer is if you get raided here, you just shuffle back and forth. We do have Shivering out of the way. You'd think, why didn't Puppy Paw get it sooner? It's because a lot of the, the injured knights were just flopping. Like, this is the, the trade-off against Range Zone, right? Like, she can easily find those initial ones. And obviously, he was forced into an all-hands-on-deck situation at his base. So he couldn't just keep them far away and go for it a bit quicker. But now that it's coming, it's going to be a bit harder for you to snowball into level 3 here. Now you have to kind of aim for a big fight if you're me and Micah. We still have one knight left behind, which I love. I don't think you want to spring too quickly here. Your goal should be to kind of posture on the front side before going. Or you could just be a greedy mother ducker. Yeah, that's less than ideal. Neomiker isn't chasing because he doesn't see what we see, which is that Puppy Paw is nowhere near. If he knew this, he'd go around both sides and kill the knight. Yeah, actually, in some ways, not too bad now that Puppy Paw is just forcing a lot of reaction from Miyamika at the back of his base. Because the difference here is the ball, right? It's an eco lead, yes, but the stupid part about this Civ, it's not enough to just immediately get an eco lead. You have to keep sustaining it. Because although there's a 10 worker kill difference, the eco difference is 4. Also, is it me or did me and Micah just give up on night production? I guess he kind of has to eventually, right? Because of that scaling eco we talked about. I don't know if we were at that point, though. He does such a good job scalping. I, I think he was far enough ahead on worker kills that he could have just remained night producing. We do still have that knight on the flank. The group massing on the backside here for a jump onto the villages of Miyamika. Now, with 19 spears, you damn well expect him to be able to protect, but he can't. Look what he's doing. Okay, this is how the game's going to swing. The problem now is Miyamika, he's got mass spears, but that's not good at chasing villagers. On the other side, mass knights is. Jumps in, deals with the spears, and now you can hunt for the economy. Puppy boy, he sees it as well. Charges coming in. Big initial hit here. No textiles. Me and Mike are running for his life, but there is not enough room in that TC. Puppy Paw, he backs away though. Gets free worker kills. Other side of it though, he gets distracted. Me and Mike is absolutely outplaying him in this game. That's a free worker kill for what, four? It looks like Puppy Paw did find an additional two. Wait, what? Oh my god. What is happening in this game? Me and Micah was on the verge of just taking it with that maneuver, but then slips with the villagers. And Puppy Paw is the Reaper in waiting, now ahead by one villager. With it mostly being spears, this is not a dive comp anymore. On the other side, the night count is brutal. 
18, and there's only 17 spears, of which only about five of them are at home to defend. There really isn't much to stop Puppy Paw just committing in, other than the fact that he understands that in this matchup, he's still got time. And what the f <laughs> What? How did we get here? These were the ball gatherers, right? He ran the ball gatherers all the way across next to Miyamika's base. It's crazy because if the blacksmiths was just one tile deeper, he could snipe eight villages easily here. Oh my god. It's crazy how this all began off that back of that, that free worker kill we didn't see. And the way it's just snowballed back and forth now. I mean, this is a thing that can be entertaining. I've got to give it to them. The way they're playing this matchup, like I said, it's meant to be GG by like the second engagement. This has been really back and forth. I've been impressed by both players in this one. Villagers on the deer. They got found. He saw them moving out. Needs to get the knights here quickly. No textiles, so these villagers do flop dead fast. Is he going to commit? Yeah, he knows straight away. He even turns the villagers around with the shivs. So charge is going to come in. Yes, you are trading into a counter, but the numbers favor you. However, a backstab's coming through. Me and Mikey with the reinforcements here. The villagers are going to be lost. There's no denying it. He has to run away. And level 3 zone is in. Now, level 3 zone, not as absurd in range form as it is in melee when your opponent is futile. Usually. In this matchup, it's golden, though. 100 damage. You basically can kill knights from half HP. It's going to be very difficult for Pudpaw to just keep scaling knights here. Especially now that eco hit. He's behind by 6. We should have what? Probably... When champions? Okay, I thought maybe riders, but in fairness, when your opponent's an age behind, the champions are very valuable. Usually. Once again, I keep emphasizing usually because the difference here is that you're up against French knights, right? You're not up against mass spears, mass archers. Oh, how the hell does he get out of this now? You can see he's trying to raid all around. Me and Mike's weakness is in his immobility. Remember, purple, he's got a lot of spears. Wait, was this the one that... No, uh, Jack Leo. The, I, so, the when they were doing the podcast, Puppy Paul was playing against Julie Beck. I would have laughed my ass off if he'd lost that series because he was doing that, though. This matchup was played in the early hours of this morning. So, fresh. Me and Micah... What's the play now? We've got so many spears. I like that he's leaning more knights because you need to start raiding again. It's just—it's so frustrating, man. Like, how do you look at this this eco count and then look at the worker kill and make sense of it? You'd think that there's a second TC. There really isn't. Fuck it, Paul. So many knights to play with. If this continues like this, he'll just go age free. Charge comes in. Villagers get found. I'm hesitation to fight. The spears were our position there. So it's going to allow him to follow up, hitting into the Knights again. I mean, at this point, you're not thinking, oh my god, level 4 zone, right? It shouldn't happen. Theoretically. Because, for example, even if you lost your whole army, let's say you have 20 Knights here. That's 24 XP each. So that ends up being 480 XP. That's only a third of what you need to get level 4. It's like, realistically, this is the stage of the game where you don't panic that zone is just going to get level 4. You are going to be more willing to fight. So many spears, though. We still have no transition. What? Instead of even going archers, he's going into spears. I guess he wants to have just a handful of spears to defend against the small group of knights, and then he just wants to send it into Mia Micah's base. Yeah, you can see Mia Micah is looking to do the same, but oh my god, that is not a healthy line of knights. Handful of spears really could be his undoing, but they aren't here yet. There are, however, knights in waiting. Spears are moving across now, and it looks like Puppy Paul's just going to go for the trade. Champions just got summoned. It's going to be a dive underneath the main. Spearmen are on the way, but they are Dark Age Spearmen, folks. 
Counter raid coming in though. And Mia Micah is going to get snatch and grab. Puppy Paw. Not committing through though. The Spearmen have mirrored the move here. 17 of them ready to defend. Other side of this, Mia Micah diving even deeper. Does he see it though? The villagers narrowly dodge him. Are you allowed to avoid the ability cooldown JD like that? It's part of the game. It's in the game, is what I'll say about that. Are you talking about, like, essentially it's kind of a mini animation cancel? It is what it is. And what it is, is a loss for the reigning champion. Mio Micah, it took a slog to get here. An absolute bloodbath to open this series. But he leads in the first. <laughs> what a crazy game. Let me know what you guys thought about this. I mean, brackets that they stand. Obviously, we've still got potentially two more games to come. And you can see what the draft's going to be. But that was fantastic to open this series. Let me know. Would you have done what me and Mike had done there? When he got that initial night lead, initial eco lead, brother, would you have switched into Spears as well? Or would you have went the full distance on Blast night v night? Do you think you would have won with that? Or was me and Mike the smarter cookie here? Let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.